It is now time to conduct a scale audit on all the diagnostics in a secure coding rule. We shall therefore go into the Jasper GUI and select a secure coding rule to look at. What rule have we not looked at yet? Here's one, STIR31-C, priority 18, and there's only 10 diagnostics. So we're going to filter based on STIR31-C, and we can actually display all 10 diagnostics right here. Now, STIR31-C is the rule about buffer overflows. It simply says guarantee that storage for strings has sufficient space for character data and the null terminator. So this is not only just about buffer overflows, it's about buffer overflows for strings. We're not worried about arrays of types other than characters or wide characters or character-like things. So let's look at our first diagnostic. Uh, this the time the message is fairly info free. The function might be able to write outside the bounds of allocated memory, which could corrupt data, yada yada yada. So what's going on here? Uh, we see that there is a structure with a memory called PFX forms, and it's being indexed by element i, and the i is bound by num PFX forms in the same sequence the same struct. So in other words, PFX forms is some sort of array with non PFX forms presumably representing the bounds of the array. Let's search for in uses of PFX forms. Uh, we're looking for a struct definition, so uh, it's likely to be in the, the .h file down at the bottom here. If we go down there, we see that it is actually a double pointer, which means it's a pointer to an array. But the array is not of type char, it's of type jazz cmpx form, which is defined right up here, and it's clearly a structure type of sorts. In other words, while this may be an invalid array write, it is not an invalid write of a string. Therefore, this is a false positive. Now, there are nine other diagnostics, but if we look, we'll notice that there's some overlap in the line numbers. So let me sort by line numbers and see what we have here. Uh, filter. So there's four diagnostics about line 346, and four about line 635. These are all produced by Fortify, and the reason there are four of them is because Fortify looks at applications. There are four applications and four instances of a main function, and each application has the same problem, although this problem turns out to be a false positive. So I'm just going to mark these all as false. And move on to another diagnostic. Let's look at another diagnostic complaining of buffer overflow. This top one says the format string argument to sprintf, and the rest of the message is fairly information free. So it's complaining about a buffer overflow on sprintf, which is quite plausible. sprintf prints fills buff with a format string created from this format string and its arguments. Opster is a string, as we can see from percent s, and overhead is an integer. So unless buff is considerably bigger than opster, then this material will overflow buff. But in order to ascertain that, we need to know how big buff is and how big opster is. Uh, besides opster, you know, there's, what, 20 characters here, and there's 10 characters from a stringification of overhead. So 25, 30 characters. So how big is buff? If we look at that, then, uh, well, buff is used in an awful lot of locations, but if we go to JPT, JP2 Inc. down here, we can see that right before the buff call, the sprintf call, buff is 4096. So that answers that question. But how big is opster? And furthermore, opster, if opster is null, then clearly this thing simply prints an empty string and no buffer overflow is possible. So we want to know if opster could be a string that's 4096 characters or more. So if we click on opster, then we go to inc JP encode, JP2, okay, here we are. Then we just simply see that here's our sprintf call, and 
before the sprintf call, opster is defined as the final argument to JP2N code. Which means that uh, its value depends on who calls JP2N code. So let's look at JP2N code. It's actually never directly invoked. It's invoked only indirectly through this encode value. It's set to a struct value from encode, as you can see here. And if you look through the rest of this, you'll see that other uh, functions get passed into the encode value. So let's look at this encode value. Uh, it's initialized only by jazzinit.c to several functions, including our own JP2 encode. It is uh, defined down here in this .h file as simply a function that takes three arguments, the last one of which is our options argument. And it's only invoked up here in jazzimage.c. And we can't see the arguments because they trail off the end of the line. But going to, our, to the actual code, we see that the third argument is simply called opster again. They're not very creative with their variable names. But if we move up, we can see that opster is again defined as the last argument in this function, jazz image encode. So let's dig into jazz image encode. So we have four lines here. The third line is a declaration of jazz image encode. The first and last line, jazz image encode, is called with opster equal to zero. And only the second line is in call with a non null uh, value. So only this line might possibly have buffer overflow. The other ones will not. And in this case, it's called with this variable, uh, outops. So what is outops? <laughs> it just keeps getting deeper and deeper, doesn't it? So outops is defined in the Jasper C application, but we have a rather weird scenario here. It's defined first, then it's used, read in this call to jazz image encode, and then it's set to zero, and then to uh, to another value, outops buff. So what's going on here? So if there is a use of uninitialized memory being read here, then that is a separate problem from our potential buffer overflow. Since we have a cert secure coding rule preventing reading of uninitialized memory, I'm going to trust that our static analysis tools would flag this as a problem if it indeed is a problem. And I'm going to trust that whoever audits that part later will investigate that part. So for now, I'm going to assume that command ops is initialized, and which means it has to be initialized either to null, which is not a problem, or to this value, which may be a problem. So let's go here. And we can see that out ops buff is initialized by this add opt function, which takes a string and calls sterlin on it, but more importantly, calls stir cat. So it builds op string from smaller components. But there's another wrinkle, and that is it makes sure that opster cannot be larger than maxlen. Maxlen serves as the bounds to the string. So that is the check that we want to make sure can prevent buffer overflow. If we go back, we can see here that the maxlen value is this ops max, uh, probably a macro. And what is the value of ops max? The value of ops max is 4096, which means that opster can be up to 4096 characters. So let's recap. Back to our original statement, we are comparing the length of buff and of opster. And we found that buff is 4096 characters and opster can be up to 4096 characters. In other words, if opster is close, say 4095 characters, then we can have buffer overflow thanks to this format string and the stringification of overhead. Therefore, this diagnostic is true. And since this diagnostic is true, these other diagnostics, which are duplicates, are also true. Now, we have several diagnostics we haven't looked at. There's two remaining ones that are unknown, and we could analyze those as well. But this is already a long audit, and so I'm going to just be lazy and mark them as suspicious because we found at least one true diagnostic. So the last thing to do is that since we have a true diagnostic, it behooves us to produce a blurb about this diagnostic. 
that we can show the client to convince them that they have a serious problem with their code. So here is our blurb. It's fairly straightforward. Again, it highlights the call to sprintf that is problematic. It kind of glosses over the complex analysis we did, but it does contain the important fact that both buff and opster are 4096 characters. Then it contains the uh, cert rule being violated and concludes with several possible solutions such as using a call to snprintf rather than sprintf. snprintf is a drop-in replacement for sprintf. It simply it takes the same arguments but it takes an extra argument indicating the length of the destination buffer and if the format string is too large to fit in the destination buffer the format string gets truncated which is much better than having a buffer overflow. That concludes the buffer overflow audit.